Well, I'm going to open up the, the Conservation Commission meeting for March 12th, 2024. First on the agenda is request for determination of applicability, 8 Stockwell Road. Joe and Michelle Boisvert seek to construct an agricultural storage building on their property adjacent to an intermittent stream. Hi, I'm uh, Ward Smith, Wendell Wetland Services. I'm here on behalf of the applicants. The applicants could not be here tonight. They're, uh, they have some kind of event at UMass, which is the, one of their largest customers for their uh, maple products. Um, so uh, hopefully I can answer any questions you have. Uh, they're proposing to uh, construct a 40 by 60 foot steel frame storage building with a 20 foot wooden lean to um, near the existing buildings on the site <clears throat> of the North Hadley Sugar Shack site. There's a small intermittent stream ditch that drains an offsite bordering vegetated wetland that's approximately 30 feet from the closest corner of the building. Um, they've already installed silt fence uh, between the proposed project area and the ditch slash intermittent stream. Um, we feel that it meets the exemption under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act regulations, given that it's uh, 3,600 square feet in total area and the threshold is 4,000 square feet, um, that it's going to be used for commercial uh, agriculture use. It's just going to be a storage building for various items that they use in their sugaring operation. And there won't be any uh, bordering land subject to flooding or bordering vegetated wetland filled by the project. It's it's just it's it, it could be approvable as just a buffer zone project, even if it were not an agricultural project. The uh, how close is it to the intermittent stream? The closest part? Thirty feet. We have a thirty-five foot bylaw, Hadley. Does that does that? Uh, well, if you want to require it to be 35 feet, I think you might be able to push it back. I'm just wondering if that uh, is not waived for agricultural projects. No, it is not. Okay. If you want to put that as a stipulation that it's 35 feet and no closer, I think you can live with that. Okay. So, Kayla's uh, coming up to the site. I've seen pictures of it. Some of the board members have driven by and are aware of what the site is. Yeah. I don't think we have any. Is, is it going to be a slab on grade or is it going to be a foundation? There's going to be a frost wall, but it'll be a slab on grade, but it needs a four foot frost <clears throat> wall underneath the building. So we have to be careful of uh, any excavation in the 35 foot zone, storage of materials. Yep. So how far is the silt fence from the intermittent stream now? I haven't seen it, but it's um, maybe Kayla can answer that. But it's between the proposed work area and the intermittent stream. The area is already cleared. It's been cleared for years. Uh, it's not wooded. Okay, so this was not up when I did a site visit. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. Any other board members have questions, sir? <clears throat> no, no, pretty straightforward. I looked at it. All right, so. Uh, looking at the determination of applicability, I can see two of the boxes we can check. Negative determination two, the work described in the request is within an area subject to jurisdictions under the act, but will not remove, fill, dredge, or alter that area. Therefore, said work does not require the following of a notice of intent. And then we have box six, the area and or work described in the request is not subject to additional review and approval by Hadley, but we pursue it with municipal wetlands ordinance by law, the 35 foot rule will be added to that. So do you want to add the special conditions that construction must be 35 feet from the intermittent stream yes. and erosion and sedimentation control should be placed how many feet from the stream then? I'd say 25 feet, 20 feet. What's the board feel? I mean, really, as long as it's in between it. You yeah. yeah. need some room to do excavation. But That's the thing, yeah. So I'd say 20 feet. Okay. So I'm going to make those <clears throat> proposals. Uh, first, I'll look for a motion to uh, close the hearing. I'll make it. Second. 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 Steve. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Steve? What's that? I don't know if they can phone them off. Uh, yes, you yes. Yes. Gordon? Yeah. Myself, aye. So it's unanimous. So I'm also going to look for a motion to adopt the negative two determination I described earlier and the negative six determination with the conditions that we discussed. Do we have a motion for that? 
So moved. moved. Okay, Ray, second. Second. Steve, any further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Gordon's. Thank Aye. you. We have four out of five. So we okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. There we go. All right, Ward, so I'll send out that determination later this week. I'll send you a digital and physical copy. Thank, thank you very much, everyone. Have a good no night. Problem. Have a good night. Excuse me. Is it, may I ask, could you introduce yourself? For those of us who haven't, I haven't been in a long time. We never had to do it before. I'm Gary Paul, oh, in the chair. You don't do it? Oh. No. No, I'm Steve. Okay, hi Steve. Hey, Gordon, Gordon Smith. Hi Gordon. Ray Mishkowski. Brandon Daniel. Hi. Nancy. Kayla. Kayla. Nice to meet you. What was your name? Nancy Bannerman, 17 High Meadow Road. No, I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm a oh. attendee. Next on the agenda is request for determination of applicability 8 Front Street, Alexander Bildu and James Sector seek to construct a 12 by 22 deck. Adjacent to their home in the riverfront area. <clears throat> Anyone here to talk for that? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so this had already been approved once, uh, but due to times of COVID and lumber being ridiculously <laughs> expensive, uh, the project never took place. Uh, so having the original sign off uh, expire, uh, we're just looking into <clears throat> the same project that was intended on the first time. Okay. So I have the previous request for the termination. Um, the whole property is in the 100 foot inner front river front. The deck is going on the side of the house, not in the back, close, back closest to the stream. The deck will not be any closer to the stream than the existing house. Um, work description for cement post below frost line. There's diameter. With deck off inside the house. <clears throat> and if I provision the wetland protection act, it's in the inter it's in the immediate area of the house for requesting determination, single family house and record. Blah blah blah. This was done back in okay, this is a new application. Yeah, it was the original was 2020. Yeah, it's before. So we have sketches from before. Yeah. And it's the same schedule. Everything's the same. Yep. I don't expect you to remember what it was. Uh, Sinkowitz and yourself, Gary, were the two members at the time. The others are gone to walk the property. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I just got a duplicate 20. But it was basically moved back in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, where the actual previous determination. <clears throat> I guess special edition. So. <clears throat> I'm going to look for a motion to close the hearing. The motion to close the hearing. Steve, second by. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So next we're going to go on to the actual determination. Well, we previously checked off before with a negative two. The work described in the request is within an area subject to protection under the act, but will not remove fill dredge or alter that area. Therefore, said work does not require the following of notes and consent. And we also have the number six, which is a wetland bylaw, 35 foot zone. We're going to add the, I'm going to propose the same special conditions um, for the construction of the deck in the riverfront. This determination is issued by under the West, excuse me. This determination is issued under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and Hadley Local Wetlands Bylaw. It approves the construction of 12 by 16 decks. Is that different from those ones? Yeah, no, that's right. Hmm? That's right. 12 by 16? Yes. Okay. okay. 12 by 16 deck on the northeast side of the house, approximately 45 feet from the top of a steep bank down to the Mill River. Work is taking place in a flat lawn area and will not be any close to the rivers in the existing house. The applicant owner must follow the following special conditions. The roads and sediment control area shall remain in place until the work is done and the ground above stabilizes vegetation. Any material dug up shall not be placed in a resource area in a 100 foot riverfront area. 
So I just look for a motion for that. These are the identical conditions. Yep, that's what motion. Yeah. So we'll second. I'll second. Gordon. Any total discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. Next on the agenda. So I'll send that to you later this week. Thank you. Thank Next you. on the agenda, notice of 10 315 Russell Street. Police SLS seeks to construct to reconstruct the Subaru dealership building in the parking area. Work will take place within the riverfront area in a 100 foot buffer zone. Okay. Who's here to present for that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who's on deck for police? Well, oh, good evening, everybody. I'm Steve, Steve Riberty, um, senior wellness scientist. I got a consulting. I've been doing this for 25 years, all in the valley. Um, Tom Reedy's here from Bacon Wilson. Mark Rubin from our office is also here as well. Um, was like, we got the PowerPoint with the stuff on yeah, it. Unfortunately, the projector is not working. Um, so we have, we have the physical plans. It's going to be know. somewhat brief because we have. Yeah, this one will keep short. We, Kayla and I, were out walked the site recently, and both par properties, they bought the uh, Harbor Freight site yep. as well as Steve Booth site. So they own all the properties. Uh, Barry Roberts sold that to them. So, but for both projects, there's an expansion of the Steve Lewis site when we built the garage there, in addition, and the parking lot was changed, and then the construction of the Harbor Freight site, both have, don't have certificate of compliances. So we can't proceed forward until we get those issued, yep. make sure everything was built the plan, so we have to know what we're working with. We've seen some changes on the site for drainage. With the guys could be new wetlands or less than people's properly maintained. Mm -hmm. So, do you have a file number for this scale? Yeah. Yes. Um, it's 170. We have a file with, I don't know if it's not any comments from them, but, anyways. Yeah, we got the file number 297. 297. And you're going to be able to address those comments later. We don't have to. Yeah, exactly. Yep, yeah, we can address the comments later. They're all pretty straightforward. So, uh, the biggest comment on there was there's riverfront that's located off the parcel that's going to project onto the front edge, which we're going to address and put on, and we'll address it next time but as you said it's taking the existing dealership it's going to be some land work conversion there's not a lot of changes to what's exists pavement that exists there currently it mostly changes within pavement mm -hmm. stormwater design you so know. basically just give, you're giving us a narrative you can't put anything up on the screen for yeah i think the powerpoint if you want to just i don't know can you see it i can't really see it right yeah but it, it's we, we'll take it up in the next meeting yeah, I would say we like you said we have to close out the two certificates of compliance. So we're looking at talking to a surveyor engineer. Actually, since we're here, um, what level of of an as built I think would be acceptable? Stamped by a, a engineer, PLS, just you know, a letter saying that an engineer reviewed it and it's substantially you know been built according to the orders of conditions. So we're we're reaching out to. Well, you probably don't want to spend plans, but you're going to be working off of that to do the reconstruction. Yeah. So you're going to want to see what's there, which would be what you're going to be working with for the plans. So if I could, so we have the we have all the plans for both Steve Lewis done by Forest Construction, whenever that was, and then 303 Russell Street. It's actually just that rear parcel. Barry still owns that front building, but it's like that rail, the building oh, that yeah. was built so, for rail. So he, so he still owns the. He still owns front, that front. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. that wasn't clear when we were out there. Okay. It's just the back that uh, police owns. So it's that one. And then where the old rails building was that's taken down, uh, police owns that parcel 315 and then that rear 303 parcel. But we, we should get um, Barry to do with the COC for. Yeah, no, that's what I'm talking about. So. Because all that's within the 100 foot. Mm -hmm. Totally. And yeah. it's all done according to plan. I think what Steve's asking is so that's not a problem because 
the engine, we still talked to the engineer. We've already talked to Randy Eiser, George Cook to go out and get an as built for 303, including the Harbor Freight. So let's just take that whole site out. Mm -hmm. It's the 315 Russell Street. It was Forish Construction who built it. They're no longer in business. The, they retired. So we're trying to figure out what does the commission want for us to get, you know, who, who do we get out there to say it was built in accordance with the plans? That's really the question. And what would you like to see? I mean, you, you, you see the plans basically, yeah. and you could just probably verify okay. was it built the plan. Okay. That, yeah, exactly. We that. I, I think we're more concerned with the Harbor Freight site because there's a lot of wetness all around that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was a sensitive site when buried. I, I, you did it from Keats Lumber. Were you going to be redeveloping the building? You're actually replacing the building? In the back, no. Everything on the Harbor Freight site is staying as staying is. Staying as is. Yes. The only thing, they're maybe cutting in a different door on the building, easterly yes, side of the back building. Um, but the, the extent of the pavement, it just doesn't have a top coat. It has its base coat. They just have to put the top coat on there. But it, nothing new is happening on that parcel. We're tearing down the front of the building. We're tearing it all down, right? Mm. Uh, I mean, on the three three fifteen, Steve Lewis, Steve Lewis, all coming down. Correct. And the new building is going to be further back in the road. Correct. All in these paid parking lot here. It's already Correct. established in terms of service. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I think when you see like, if maybe we'll get an overlay exhibit to show you like, there's not a lot of different. There's not a lot of that building going to be in the hundred foot zone. No, the it, parking lot staying the same. So I think it's going to be pretty simple. It's going to be pretty that simple. particular site. Yeah. You're actually introducing more green area in the river front and the front you're taking out some parking area yes in the front yes okay yeah but we'll get that we'll get those certificates started. i'm looking for a motion to continue this hearing to april 9th at 6 30. oh the mayor shall with the stormwater review would you want to get the stormwater review for the steve lewis site okay what do you mean do you want to get a peer review on the stormwater report. we're working through if i could if you don't mind uh we're in the planning board process now we have a hearing april 2nd berkshire design is doing that peer review and okay. we obviously submitted stormwater calcs to them so if you want yes okay i'll be in touch same thing okay. Okay. we'll make sure that yeah okay. we're with you Very good. okay so i'm looking at the motion that will continue the april 9th at 6 30. i'll make a motion second, the meeting. second by steve any further discussion all those in favor? Aye. 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 Gordon? Yeah. Okay, you gotta say yes. Yeah. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. Moving along, we're gonna to move to the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation, 38 North Maple Street. Bacon Wilson PC has filed an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation, 38 North Maple Street. The delineation was performed by Goddard Construct Consultant. Okay. Well, good evening again. I'm Steve Rivers, senior well scientist. I'm here again for uh, the, the uh, ANRAD at um, Maple Street. So again, this, without plans, it's a little bit hard to visualize, but you know, there was a previous ANRAD done on the site. What vintage was that like five-ish years ago or something? Yeah, maybe so. There was a previous one done. It expired. We went out to re-delineate the yeah. site um, to get basically the wetland lines reconfirmed. There weren't any substantial changes to anything that was done prior. We, we flagged everything. Um, you know, there's always little nuances when one survey does something and there's some that someone else does a different level of survey. But pretty much the wetlands all line up in the same spots, same wetland areas. There's nothing that's tracked drastically different on that site other than the site getting more vegetated and more grown up over time since the last time when we were just out there. You can see how dense mm -hmm. the shrubbery has has gotten over the years. Um, so in that sense, the wetlands, in our estimation, haven't changed. We did a lot of digging out there. It's a farm field. You know, we did a lot of transects, a lot of looking at the soils because it was, you know, that type of a site and, you know, pretty much confirmed the original boundary and redelineated it in essence as is. But we have different flag numbers and slightly different locations, but it's in essence the same wetlands in the same areas. Yes. Oh, so I just pulled up on my computer the over you could maybe see it over the okay. overlay of the old oh, yeah, yeah. well in delineation and in your new one. Okay. Pretty close. But do we have this one also that close we know? Um I don't have it on me. But basically let's see. So you would just you can either approve the boundaries as shown, um approve them mod and modify it, you know, if you don't approve one boundary and mention that there or say it's inaccurate. And I, I guess one question was, there's a mapped perennial stream 
on the property. And so, it, like, I think the question is, do we want to just say that this ORAD doesn't approve or deny the presence of the perennial stream and leave that for another day? That was our thought on it, too, because we were there in the summer. We didn't see it. We saw some kind of surface water with all the rain moving. So as a scientist, I'm fairly confident it's not there. And it was probably, you know, plowed over years ago. It didn't show up in the last ANRAD. Nobody ever noticed it or saw it in that delineation. Um, we will evaluate it again this summer. So if we want to just confirm the wetland boundaries and exclude any bank, meaning you know, high water line stuff, which mm -hmm. protects riverfront, that's okay. And then I think we can look at it. So how would we have that? Yeah. I think it's just a finding of yeah, we just I the fact in your right, was, the order. So I, like how we do the special condition, you know, like a piece of paper that's separate, just attach it. And for the people here, I know some people here probably for this project too. This is just to confirm wetland boundaries. This isn't for a project. I don't even know what's going on out there. It's just wetlands have been expired. <laughs> they, they know where the wetlands are, so they can do whatever planning processes they need to do to design something. Things will come back in as a permit when anything's proposed out there. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I I think this whole side is or a butter, I don't know. <clears throat> I am too. Butter there. Yeah, You're butter butter. Well. Uh -huh. um, we're up on the High Meadow Road and obviously concerned about um, what might eventually be down the road for that space. Uh, has anyone seen a, a notice of intent from uh, from who is it? Uh, Bacon Bacon Wilson. Bacon yeah, it was just I mean so I'm Bacon Wilson. I think it was just because I signed the application, but it's North Maple Street. It is a, it, Barry Roberts owns right. the property. No notice of intent yet. So typically, yeah. in development, first step is let's figure out what the resource areas are. So that like sets the boundaries of that extent of development. This this site, I was involved in the unsuccessful project on behalf of Pythologist, pick a number of years ago. Um, as you probably all, all know, it's a limited area where you could actually mm -hmm. probably ten acres of the entire site that can actually be developed. And I think that's if whatever is going to be developed there, and this is agricultural residential zone, so there's only so many things you can actually mm -hmm. put there, mm -hmm. that's where it's going to be. It's going to be in that pocket. There's also um, priority habitat on the site, you know, mm -hmm. proximate right. to where everybody lives, yeah, uh, rare species, and I think we know what it is. But Spade plateau. Thank you. Yeah. So that's, mm -hmm. and that's also outside of that. And so we expect we're going to go through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Division of Fisheries and Wildlife talking to them, getting probably a conservation restriction mm -hmm. on the majority of the land. How much like, land? How big is that parcel? The parcel itself? 45 acres. I think so. Yeah, it's, it's big. It's I think it's 40 40 40 40 40. And 10 40. acres is developable, developable. possibly. That's, that's it. Yeah. And knowing rare species, I do a lot of rare species work in natural, natural heritage. Like, that's going to be very restrictive. Uh, they're going to have a lot to say and what yeah, that's all happens all where. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there's not there's nothing yet. I think this is the first step, and then it's figuring out okay, based on this in the footprint, what can you actually do? What makes sense given everything? And so then there'll be notice of intent. There'll be a planning board process for whatever's going to go there as well. So you'll be informed, and if you want to give me contact information, I can always we can send you things out because it's could I see barren, could, could I see a, uh, mm -hmm. Have it sent to me or something a lot of where those 10 acres are. Yeah, I mean I you can look if you want to if you got it. Yeah, if you want to look right on there, it's like inside of that, I don't want to say walking path, but that trail. Uh -huh. Like inside below. It, precisely. Okay. That's it's oh, where if you're familiar oh, with where the five okay. college annex was gonna go. Yeah. It's essentially that that is the developable area. So total lot area, 45 acres and Where's the? I can't see um, where the ten acres are. It's like in the middle. Yeah. Is it outlined in blue? Well, I think in it. No, I think so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Because of the how far they are from the other project. project. Could someone yeah. walk us through? Yeah, of course. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. So the these are the, the lines are the wetland boundaries, mm -hmm. and then the developable part would be somewhere in here. So it would be like a hundred feet outside of these lines. So you would draw kind of like a buffer zone around all of these You're, blue lines. Right, the, this is, yeah. So if there's going to be development, that's where it's going to be proximate to that line, right in here. This is all going to be like conservation restriction. Uh, and is there proposed access to Rocky Hill Road from that parcel? or As far as part of the... Only? No, I think what, what Barry's it's thinking is just maple, for maple. For there is access here, but that's steep and just it's Rocky oh, Hill it's Road. Scary. And it's, yeah. it's like... Yeah, there's I, no room. Yeah. Well, I do. I mean, everybody, you know, like, we're local, right? So we yeah. know what Rocky Hill Road is. You don't want to be pulling out. So that's why that North Maple 
like if we've got to cross the wetland, we've got to cross the wetland. But I think coming in off this existing road and just coming in here, mm -hmm. that's where that's where it's going. And can you show us where High Meadow Road is? Because uh, it's like here. Because yeah, Rocky I think Hill here. Goes, so yeah, Rocky right. Hill comes up here. Yeah, so it's actually right in here. So this is a. No, 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 you're not. Yeah, I mean, this is still, still the size. Yeah, this that's is yeah, so it's up here. This is all the parcel. Oh, oh, the parcel. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that'd be up, like up yeah. here. I mean, you're, yeah, because if Rocky Hill comes up here, like oh, you're, oh. we can show like that would be helpful. Proxy, yeah, yeah. Once once we're into it, we can show you how far. And then obviously, you know, the topographical range, you're not going to get anything is, that's going to block any view of those mountains. Excuse me. Yeah, how, of course. how do I? Can I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. in discussion, is that okay? Mm -hmm. um, so, doesn't Barry Roberts also own that house that he moved near the nursing home? He does, yeah. Are those connected parcels? No, they're not. No. They're not. No. That's uh, 22 North Maple Street is totally segregated from this part. From that, okay. Yeah, that's for the, right, okay. It was, yeah, this is, I think that that was part of the, the Lee's property, I think. Or is this, this the Lee's and the other one might have been, but they're different properties. Okay. Is this the same Barry Roberts that built those monstrosities in downtown Amherst? <laughs> mm. What monstrosities? <laughs> These big brick, nice. tall buildings. In downtown Amherst? Yes. I don't. He hasn't built yet in, he owns a building in downtown Amherst, but you might be thinking about Archipelago. Okay. Kyle, and, Just Kyle Wilson, Dave Williams. I heard his name before. So. Yeah, yeah. He's a good guy. I mean, folks on the commission may know him, but he does. And Hadley, he's done the East Street Commons, the over 55 the condominium development. Yeah, I know, I know him pretty well. He's a good guy. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. We'll have an honest conversation with him. I mean, he's, he's local. He's not. I mean, it's he knows what he's doing here. And this is just preliminary. Yeah, this is just to get and the. We we what, really have no sense of what his plans are for this land. I think it depends on how. I mean, these being accepted, we're still looking at that same developable area, and we're looking at something that's allowed. So, I mean, it could be housing. In there, um, I mean, solar's allowed there too. Could be solar. Um, he's not doing like a nonprofit education. Like it's nothing like that. I think it's nothing like the deposit. No, no, correct. It's not one and be. a third times the size of the Home Depot. You've got it. It's <laughs> not. I can tell you without no. He is not going to do that. Yeah. What's well, not going for that? Correct, but that was we won't have to get into 48 section three. But yes, it's not zoned for that. But nonprofit educational institutions Joe are allowed. But he's not. Yeah, looking to do that. Any further discussion? Uh, yeah, Just a question. Um, or actually, more. I'd love. To, I love hearing they said that the portion of this might end up in conservation restriction. The majority, I would say. Yeah. So um, I'd be thrilled to support that if if there's if there if I'll give you contact information sure. if there's meetings I can go to to be. A supporter of that, you know, we see bobcat all yeah. along the property. The great, it's just great wildlife yeah. uh, land. So yeah. I'm, anything you can do to support that. Okay, terrific. Thanks. Yeah. Same. Cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll look for a motion before the hearing. I'll make it. Well, second. Second. Any further discussion? Question. <laughs> What happens next? So they if they approve it, yeah. then it's locked in, and then we're able to start some designs because typically you don't want to start your engineering until you know where those wetlands are. So then we'll start some designs. We'll once we get plans, we'll have to submit to the conservation commission for a notice of intent. You'll get notice of that, and that's them saying, okay. We say, here's the work we want to do, and they say, okay, you can do it, but here's how you're going to do it, and they issue what's called an order of conditions. Simultaneously, we would go through the process, both with uh, natural heritage because of the endangered species, to get that taken care of, to figure out what we're going to do with the balance of the land to protect that species, and that's where that conservation restriction comes in. And also, we'll be going through the planning board process to get the use approved, and so that's a public hearing process as well. And so as an abutter, you'll be notified of 
You got plenty, plenty of opportunity. Plenty of opportunity. One last thing, because I, if I'm really sure. having a hard time reading that map. In terms of the vernal pond that's yeah. over on the west north. Yeah, it's on the northish side. Yeah. North. Yeah. It, is there um, a restriction of a hundred foot buffer zone, and then yeah. a, another one hundred discretionary still? No. Or just 100 foot buffer zone, and that is in place here. Yeah. Okay. All the way around. Oh. Okay. For all of the yeah. wetlands. All we're approving is the wetlands. They still right. have to come back to us. This is just. Oh, sure. This yeah, is just yeah. a baby step. Yeah. In the okay. process. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just so they know what they have to work with. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And they can do it for the planning. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Thank yeah. you very much. Because far too, you know, they have to make sure what's changed since last time. Mm -hmm. Very little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're going to order delineation. I'm going to look for a motion uh, shortly here for it's accurate as depicted. The, the BVW and IVW boundaries, right? The BVW, not yet. Yeah. Okay. And you want to add another restriction on the, uh, the screen? I think we just won't. I think if you just say, like you just yeah. did, it makes it clear that. Yeah. The, the we, we, even though we saw it on the map, we were out there and I could see no evidence where there's a screen. There's there. no channel. Yeah, there's some flow. There's, there's no channel. The range, but exactly. Kayla and I walked last week. I, I don't know. So. Okay. You don't know what? Uh, well, with our motion to support that, Gordon makes a motion. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Everyone else happy? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hello. We are next on the agenda. Sarah and Mark at Fox. So I will send you the ORAD in the mail. And we'll be in touch about the PSC. Yes, you know, got to stop it by the way. Maybe you can it another Yeah, Thank you. 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 Next on the agenda is request for determination of applicability. 94 Hockenham Road, Sarah and Mark Mayhawk seek to construct a single family home at 94 Hockenham Road in the outer riverfront area and within. NHVSP capital. And just so everybody knows, I have to repeat myself on this because I get it some work for them eight years ago. So when they were setting this up originally, so I can't. But you can comment about the site if you have to. I can if you have to. You don't want. have any problem. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So Ray has a good understanding. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're on. Do you mind giving just like a little summary of what the proposed work is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the scope of the work is essentially just clearing the lot, trying to maintain the mature, healthy trees that are still there. In fact, we had an arborist come three years ago. We were pretty much um, approved to go through the state. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that it was okay to clear it and to begin to build a single family, um, two story on the property. Okay. And so you have the letter from National Heritage, which I think is in the application. Yep. Um, and there's the intermittent stream that's off the property, but it will be in the river for or 200 foot river front. So it was negative with the National Heritage, basically? Correct. Yeah, it's a no take. Okay. No take. So the only issue is you're within the 100 foot buffer zone. Whatever. How far are you planning to be from the stream again? So Randy Eisen, I believe, is working on um, pinning. yeah, pinning it to make sure that the coordinates are like well within all of the parameters required from Hadley. So I don't, I can't exactly speak to that. Yeah, at least I think it's fifty to fifty is the minimum for the side and hundred from the front. So at least fifty from the property yeah, line. Correct. And the stream is off the property line. It looks like I think about fifty feet. So yeah, the map, but you have river front, right? 
no, 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 we're across the street. street. We just have a little, okay. it, technically it's not even our stream. Um, I, I, who owns it? Bar South, maybe? Bar South, Bar South, yeah. yeah. So it's not on our property. We just wanted to make sure. You have to want to go between different properties and Mitchell property. We're very confident. Yeah, right sure. You're on Ross's side. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. I grew up with Ray. So I know that site very well. Basically, it sounds like it's a negative determination all the way. What do you want for this? Yeah. So, any further discussion from anybody in the audience or on the board? No. We're going to move for a motion to close the hearing. I'll make it. We'll make a motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four of us. Ray of Saint. Where is Ray? We got yeah. to close the hearing. Yeah, they stuck them in the back. <laughs> okay. So then we can talk about the second. Then we can talk about the question you mentioned. Okay. Okay. So um, let me say, Kayla, it's negative two, one. Probably two. Are we within 100 feet of that? <laughs> no. It, I mean, it's without looking at it. It look it looks like it's over 100 feet from that stream, but mm -hmm. so you put a wheel on it. Probably a negative one. Mm -hmm. Five, four. Yeah. Four. 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 I'm just wondering if the NAGSP counts as being subject to jurisdiction. Probably, well, you're probably right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say it's negative two. We're describing the request is within an area subject to jurisdiction under the Act. But will not remove fill dredger off that area. Therefore, it said work is not required by those and we're basically covering ourselves with the National Heritage of Endangered Species, which is even negative taking. And then we'd be uh we don't have a six on that one. We can do six, right? Yeah. Just go 35 foot rule there. Yeah, so that's so it's not subject to the 35 foot rule. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, number six. Okay. Look for a motion for that. And then do you want to add special conditions about yeah. erosion control? Go ahead, bring them on. Okay, so erosion and sedimentation control should be placed 35, well, I guess that's off the property, um, between the property line and the construction okay. zone? Yeah. Okay. Um, and shall remain in place until the ground is stabilized with vegetation. Uh, let's see. Conservation Commission shall be notified of changes to the approved project and its components. And submit photos of erosion and sedimentation controls to the con con before the start of construction. How does that sound? Sounds good to me. Any other Anything questions? Else? Okay. Um, actually, I do have one quick question. Mm -hmm. So, um, mostly along the front of the property that borders Hockenham, there's like a really steep yeah. embankment, which I'm assuming is the town property. I don't know how many feet from the road the town um, claims is theirs, but it's super, super steep. And I'm wondering if we could potentially grade it to like, plant grass and also to make it easier to clean up all of the litter that kind of like you know, the DPW. There. who's maintaining okay. do you know who's maintaining that? Yeah, check with the DPW. Yeah. Yeah. Scott, Scott McCarthy. Scott McCarthy. Yeah. Okay. Vote for a motion for that. Make a motion. Steve makes a motion. Sorry. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. All right. All four of us agree, Ray abstains. Okay. Great. So I'll send that permit to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night. That was quick. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Not allowed to bring that anymore. Yeah. Next on our agenda is request for cert request for certificate of compliance, DEP number 170-222 off Record Ridge Road, ZP Battery Devco request an invalid requests an invalid certificate of compliance for a solar array project for which construction never started. So I don't think any, is anybody here for that? Oh, Tom. I am online here, Kayla. Hi. Hi, guys. Uh, yeah, so pretty straightforward. Um, Blue Wave back some years ago, back in 2013, was in front of you guys apparently and got an order of conditions 
it's been hanging around, it's hanging around on uh, the registry of deeds and I'm looking to close that out. Uh, nothing has been done. Uh, Blue Wave does not hold the lease. Nobody holds a lease on that property. It is owned by Carl's Excavation. They do not intend to do any kind of solar work on that property. So I'm just looking to close this out. Okay, do the box of oil. Yep. Okay, so we're going to do a valid order of conditions. He hereby certified that the work regulated by the above reference order conditions has to commence. The order of conditions has lapsed and is therefore no longer valid. No future work subject to regulation under the Wetlands Protection Act may commence without filing a new notice of intent and receive the new order of conditions. So I don't really have to vote on this or not, do I? Yeah, I think we should have to vote for it. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll look for a motion to. For that, I'll make it. If I make the motion, then right. Steve, any further discussion? All those in favor of that? All right. All right. Ready? All five unanimous. Thank you. Okay, marching along. Public comment. Anything? I wonder if we could build an audience. Any public comment from the audience? Mm -hmm. Zoom. Uh, hello. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear me. I, I don't know if this would be the time for public comment. I'm a property yes. owner. I'm an out of town property owner in Hadley. And I've been uh, wrestling with an issue. I spoke with Kayla. She was uh, kind enough to forward to me the link to the meeting. So essentially, I'm here to seek the commission's guidance. Uh, I've been the owner of 142 Hockenham Road for a little over 20 years. Um, my intention had been to restore that building and um, at the time I purchased it, I thought I would be able to add on to it. Um, <clears throat> I had gone so far as to get architectural plans to scale to scale model, met several times with uh, Tim Nyhart, um, retained Randy Eisner to do the, uh, the uh, the topographical map, and I got the flood certificate from FEMA. Um, I, it got so far at one point that um, Mr. Nyhart had arranged for me to get a, a certified a butters list. That was probably about four years ago. Unfortunately, life has um, taken its turns, and I've been unable to complete that project. That said, um, I understand you guys may be familiar with this property. I know that there's some people who have been interested in buying it in the past year. It went up for sale. Next week would be one year. I've actually had the property pretty much sold twice. Um, but the owner, I'm sorry, the uh, prospective purchasers um, had approached, uh, quote unquote, the town. And I don't exactly know what that means, but they weren't comfortable with any kind of certainty as to what they couldn't and couldn't do. Um, I Again, I've spoke with Kayla about this. I've spoken with some other folks. And I guess the issue is the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, where that property is situated. And I, I think the issue has to do with whether or not that building can be added onto. As I, as I understand it, I'm certainly not an engineer or anything like that, but as I understand it, the issue has to do with if there is an addition built onto that house, it would eat up, so to speak, drainage area. And that the solution to that would be to somehow compensate for the square footage, so to speak, like if I were to put a slab adding onto the house, um, to be able to compensate for that square footage elsewhere on the property at that same um, elevation. Um, when I, a couple of the ideas that I had had were uh, to one of the plans that I had actually put together, which I have piers uh, built as part of this, this renovation. Um, I know that the folks across the street from me, apparently many years ago, had were required to put piers under their home, and they're closer to the river than I. Um, I, I basically, I don't know that you guys, you know, are going to be able to give me any specific answers. I certainly understand that, but I'm looking for your guidance. It's, you know, it's been my desire since I purchased that property to restore the building. I bought it from the Harrop fam family. Uh, uh, Ginny and Dan Dukevich sold it to me. Ginny one night said to me, you know, it's our, we're stewards of the land. We want to leave it better than when we found it. 
And I haven't done a great job of that due to the circumstances of what has uh, you know transpired uh, down here. That being said, the two folks that wanted to buy it, they want to restore it. Um, so I guess I'm trying to pick your, your brains for some ideas on how I would go about nailing down exactly what has to be done. I, I can understand a prospective purchaser doesn't want to come in and pay money and go through the process only to, to find out later that they can't do what they want. And each of the two purchasers who were very serious about it wanted to add on. So I'm just, you know, grateful you guys are, are taking the time to listen to me. And I'm hoping you could sort of just point me in the right direction. I think it's going to hire an environmental scientist to look at the site, look at the, what the zoning is. I know it's in the floodplain. Right? Yeah. In the floodplain. And yeah. that, not as you can't do an addition or build on, but you have to go through the process of permits. But I think you need to hire an environmental scientist or agent, land, land use specialist, yeah. to guide you through that process. It's not that you can't do anything with it. It's just... <sighs> We, who we, I mean, I don't know if the property just comes with its own restrictions. I mean, that, that, that you're gonna have to work through, yeah, right. And and really, you're gonna have to get somebody, <laughs> engineers, uh, soil, a soil scientist, uh, wetland specialist involved in this just to just to you spell out boundaries. what you can and cannot do there and how much room you can. Only like a New England environmental, or um, yeah. We can't recommend anybody. Right. No, you know, I know that wouldn't be that wouldn't be appropriate. But I've listened to some of the folks you've had speak. Um, but to you know, with your level of expertise, obviously, it sounds like it's an arduous process, which I don't mind going through. But you don't think that um, that it would be they would absolutely be precluded from being able to do something like that. Well, subject you, to the process, you have to, know, you have to know. For instance, in the hundred year flood plain, is the living floor area already above the 100-year flood plain or not. Because one thing you'll run into with the building inspector is if you're going to spend over 50% of the value of the structure renovating it, you have to bring it into compliance, which means elevating it. If it's not already high enough to begin with. Tim, Tim Nyhart had indicated when he reviewed the topo and the flood plain certificate I got, he indicated I would have to raise it 11 inches. Um, okay. My understanding from Randy Eisner is that that, that, in, that stuff has not changed as of this time, as far as the federal, the feds are concerned. And so, is it in anybody's benefit to be going to spend the kind of money restoring it to elevate it? And if anything, go even a little higher because of climate change. Of Otherwise, course. prospective owner will have to get the flood insurance, which can be pretty costly. Right. Um, I, I take it you, you all are familiar with the concept that it's been kind of described to me about replacing earth uh, if you're going to build it. And that's once again where you, you have to use the environmental scientists to do uh, mitigation. Right, right. I had an idea when I spoke to Kayla, and I just want to throw it out at you. I know I mentioned the piers thing. That house has a basement. If that thing went up on piers, and this is, I'm obviously I'm not looking for an official determination. I'm just trying to get my, you know, my mind wrapped a little around this. Um, the house has a basement. Would have you heard of a scenario where that would be considered a place that would be able to catch, so to speak, uh, or create a drainage area so as to compensate for an addition that would take away a drainage area? That's that's up to an environmental agency. Okay. Fair um, enough. Because we're, we're that's out of our expertise. Right. But that's the kind of stuff you would be considering in uh, when I make my application. Because today, if you were to build a house in the floodplain, basements are not allowed, period. Right. Yeah, no, I know, I, I, I know that. You need construction. Right. You have a pre-existing structure. And that's a brick structure, correct? It is. How do you raise that? So where you point the foundation somehow, I don't know if you can even do it. At that point, you know, you'd be better off just taking it out. It's a carrot. Right. right. I would think. It's like a, a spot. I'm sorry. That's a tricky spot there. That corner a lot there. I mean, it depends on how the building inspector is going. The building inspector will have the final say. If you could, you could renovate what's there, and if you keep the cost within less than fifty percent, you just have to get flood insurance if somebody wants to, to buy it and get a, a bank loan, and run the risk that you need a hundred year flood. And you might have to. 
I've, I've built buildings in a flood plain and at least stay in a flood, and that's what you live with. Right. Now, you said uh, this this rule about 50%. Could you just run that one more time? If you're spending over 50% of the value, the building inspector would be the one to talk to about that. Yep. You have to bring everything up to current FEMA regulations. <clears throat> okay. All right. So I'm looking for, obviously, you're not going to give me a name, the title of what, what, an environmental engineer. Is that what I'm looking for? Yeah. Yeah, I would say yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, folks. I um, appreciate your time. Um, you don't know me personally, but I got to tell you, it's one of the, I've, I've mentioned this to Kayla, it's one of the biggest regrets of my life that I wasn't able to finish that because I wanted to retire there. Absolutely adore Hadley. Um, but that's where it's at right now. So thank yeah. you for your time. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Any other pub public comments? There's two others on Zoom. Anybody on Zoom have any questions? Okay, discussion items. Other business, green removal policy. Okay, so I did uh, finish a draft of the green removal policy. We lost it over tonight, but I'll just hand it up. Yeah. I put it. We can review it and talk about it next yep. meeting. You can find it. Oh, All right, we can go on to the other ones. So you got a lot of stuff there. Create your true move policy to see it. Oh, perfect. Right in the bottom. Okay. So, this, I used um, similar policies from East Hampton, South Hadley, and a few other towns. I kind of patchworked it to get something that maybe could work for us. Um, so yeah, give it a look through if you have any questions or comments, and we can discuss it at the next meeting. I think it's just the question. The application. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next is code of conduct. So this was something that. I think all the boards in town um, were asked to sign. I sent, I think I sent over the actual code and you just have to adopt it, I guess, and sign your name here. Does anybody get the email of this? The code of conduct? Did you get a chance to look at it? I didn't look at it. I saw it. I saw it. I, I, saw it, but I, didn't, I didn't open it up. It's just, you know, standards for having public meetings and. If we will not have any standards, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, so I want to see the pass. There's Everyone gets five one. copies, yeah. We have to be in class. Yep. <laughs> and you can't bring cell phones to me. Yeah, no, so I'll cheat one. How about cheap ones? So is this like the Roberts rule? Roberts rules of disorder or swearing? I would assume so. It's probably yeah. where this all gets stirred up from. What if we don't sign it? You can't go to the meeting anymore. We don't until we have a radio we can I was sending out um, bills. Bills, no bills. Minutes. I have February minutes. I look at the memory events. You sure it's all hard. So you said this policy, you just pulled all these off from other towns for the most part. It's kind of. I took the ideas from other towns and some of the wording and picked what I felt like applied and then changed it up a little bit. Now, do we have anything as far as a ditch cleaning policy in this town? No, oh, geez, that's a good question. There because Hatfield, like... Hatfield's doing it right now. I talked to a couple of their members about what they're they're proposing, and they're getting a list of <clears throat> approved contractors that be allowed to do the work. And as long as they stay within certain guidelines and the property allows it, then they're going to give them the green light to do that stuff. I I thought that we ran out of money. We had money for doing ditch cleaning, and then what I understood, it ran out, and they stopped. 
That's my as far as what the town was doing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, well, I think it would be a combination of that, and then if you owned a property that, that, that you could hire X amount of you know contractors that are approved for the work, that they could come in and do it. That's already all set, ready to roll. I just wasn't sure if that's something that we'd be interested in. I sometimes have like a the DPW gets an order of conditions for ditch maintenance that just says what sort of activities or what type of maintenance is allowed without a permit and stuff like that. Or I guess it's with a permit, but it's like you can renew it and instead of going to the conservation commission every time you want to do something it's right. for that document. You fall under that. Yeah. That general. Time, yeah, like general time like permit. Yeah. But again, that's something that the DPW I think would have to have the time and interest in doing. Now, what are you talking about? You're talking about something with, with pri- well, private, like private, 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 private private individual. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, well, not the so if you had a street, yeah. you had a ditch or whatever that was nowhere near a road or the town never maintained it and you wanted to clean out, you know, would you be able to do it? If you're a farmer, yeah. If you're a farmer, yeah. So you said Hatfield's working on that? Hatfield's working on Do it. they have a draft yet? I don't know. I can ask the guy. Um, but basically, I know from what he was saying is that they're going to have a list of, you know, excavation companies that are approved in the town to do it. Mm-hmm. And as long as they go to the meeting and file a permit, they get the green light to go out there and they just they basically have their own regulations to stay within and that's it so it doesn't have to be a big process every time someone wants to do something mm. so i'm not sure if that's something that we want to lean towards maybe make it you know kind of almost mirror something like this for the tree cutting policy just to see if it even qualifies but how much land is apr and how much isn't the farmer you know because apr apr controls the ditches right not us Oh, that takes away a lot of land in Hadley. It's APR. APR controls the ditch cleaning? Yep. In the property. As far as what you can and can't do. What you can and can do. I the thought a- they just had an easement on the property. APR. The farmer lives in back of me, spent a day with a lady from APR. Yeah. And nobody from this. According to him, nobody from this board had any right to do anything on APR property other than APR. In other words, if they want to clean the ditch, change the culvert, clean the culvert, anything, it's APR, not us. On APR property. Hmm. Now, this is... I didn't know that. This is the guy that lives, the farmer that lives behind me. He spent the day with the lady from APR, and that's what she told him, and he came and told me. Interesting. It, I right foot too. I thought that was really interesting. I saw I saw a letter like that come in from Bruce when he was having a little trouble with the town. Came right from the Department of Ag, you know, natural resources yeah. and all that. And it said even the fed the guy was poking us. This is neither the federal government or the town of Hadley can go against what we say. You know, because the town was busting his ass over some stuff, and guys, the guy sent it at four thirty in the afternoon. Bruce said, "Well, when when am I going to get that?" He says, "As soon as I get done typing it up, you'll have it." Yeah. Well, so they're they're adamant on it. Okay. Well, I look for a motion accepted February <clears throat> minutes. I'll make it. Well, next motion. Second. All, right. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Three, two, and this. Okay. No, I got it. Call for a motion for adjournment. I actually have another oh, thing. Oh, I received this from Everton today. It's, I think, a notification to apply herbicides along the power lines rights of way. Um, I was, it was a little unclear to me what exactly is happening, but I just, if you want to give it a look through, I could send you this. But I, I think it's just a notification, and I believe that this sort of work would be exempt as maintenance of like public utilities. Um, but I can send this around in an email. Check with uh. Mark Simpson? Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just thought I'd mention it. And also, um, a farmer roundtable that the Hadley Climate Change Committee is co sponsoring at Plainville Farm on Friday, March 22nd at 3 p.m. if anybody's interested at Plainville Farm. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Look for a motion for adjournment. I just don't want things to say. Okay. Yeah. Shayla, if you're doing research like that, I think it's up to everybody else too. Usually we're more in line with like Hatfield and 
Deerfield, mm -hmm. not East Hampton, which is yeah. a lot bigger. Right. You know, so if you gather information for this, it's probably better to do it with smaller towns, like more like us and not bigger towns. Right. Yeah. I was I'm glad you didn't say Amherst. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm like, oh no, no I we don't need that. I was just looking at right. the towns like Deerfield yeah. and, and Sunderland and stuff, but they don't really have those types of things online. So oh, okay, I, that's what I could find. I, I really looked for you know all the towns in the surrounding area, and I just really found East Hampton, South Hadley. But, all right, just, yeah, okay, no problem. That's good advice. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. So, motion for adjournment. We got one out. Okay, is everyone out? Second? Um, I think the second thought we already did it. No one. Oh. Steve kept it. Steve kept it going. Yeah. <laughs> Almost laughing. We're adjourned.